All right, so the engine's off. We'll begin disassembly. Uh, this little motor stand is pretty sweet. I've, this is the first time I've used it, and uh, I'll put a link to it in the video. If it's something you want. Um, like I said, I've never used it before, but it seems pretty sweet because normally the motor's moving around. But first thing you do is take these two Phillips screws off of your uh, CDI pickup, and then after that, we're going to take the uh, probably the keeper bolt off. But I'll take, go ahead and take these off real quick, and then go from there. So next you're gonna take this off. I believe it's uh, and this will turn your motor over. See it's doing it right now. So you either need to break it loose or put something to stop the motor. I think yeah, I just broke mine loose, so uh, this should stay in there. Still can't come out, but it can come off the key now. So just leave leave that there. And then you got these two, which are gonna be eight millimeter. And this is your what picks up your spark off the cam. So we're just gonna. This should break loose. Sometimes they don't like to. There it went. Boom. So this little piece here, looks like it's all gonna stay together. You wanna be, watch, there's a key here on the bottom of the cam. Usually they stay pressed in, but just kind of check yours, make sure. Okay. And then that whole pickup piece can just be set aside. Now, this is the camshaft. Obviously, we're gonna have to deal with the timing chain. Um, so, you have your timing chain tensioner here. But you're gonna only get these two bolts off, basically, as I'm getting out here next. Um, and then we can take the head bolts off and start taking the head apart. All right, so go ahead and remove all of your head bolts, uh, all the little 10 millimeter or eight millimeter bolts along there than the one holding this on. You should be able to pop off your rocker arm valve cover assembly. There's that. And you can unhook this. You can do it one hand. There we go. Set that aside. At this point, you should be able to see your valve springs and your cam. It looks like everything here is all right. Um, and then, boop, we do that. And then you should be able to um, take your cam chain off of the cam shaft here. Should be enough slack. And then, sometimes you wanna be really careful not to let that drop down, like we're about to do. Um, I don't really care because we're going to be taking it apart. But if you were just doing top end work, you'd or work up here, you'd want to be careful not to drop your chain down. If you do, you can still fish it out. I've done it before. But uh, okay, next we just got to take this guy out, and then we should. Oh, and then this guy that holds your cam tensioner. So we're going to want to take that out and that out, and then we should be able to take the head off, and then get some rags because you got some oil up there that's going to fall down. All right. Uh, so I just slid the head off. Um, I once you take this bolt out here, slid the head off, slid the cylinder off, and then uh, here we are. Once you take the head off, you have to grab that timing chain tensioner and just pluck it. It goes out, up, and then you can pull the cylinder off, and then here I am. So the next step is we got to get that piston off of there. So what I heavily recommend you do is pull it up all the way and then get two rags. Stuff one kind of underneath, the other one underneath, and the reason you're gonna do that is when you go to take the C-clips off, um, they like to fly, and sometimes they could go down under into the motor, so it's best you just cover it up with rags. You don't wanna risk dropping anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll get some pliers, and I will show you how to remove the piston. All right, once you got yourself a nice little like cover here, you just wanna make sure you catch any of the pins. You just wanna come in here, 
and get yourself a nice pair of needle nodes. You'll see the clip in there that they can be kind of hard to work with. Um, I might have to do this with one hand or two hands, but you just come in at an angle. You'll see it start to lift. If you hear it. I'm gonna have to do it with two hands, but you're just gonna come in there. Sometimes if you can find the smallest pair of needle nodes you got, or you can't do that if you have like a little hook tool or something. But they're just little clips. So let me see if I can position this in a way that. One, we have one out, and I didn't even see. These are the ones with the center piece, so I could have just pulled it out a lot easier than what I was just doing. But nonetheless. now um, you can come around the back side and just push the. Uh, can't think of the word, but this guy. Once that's out, your piston will just come right out. So you don't have to worry about the pin on the other side. Um, just like I recommend when you go to load these back in with your new piston. You preload the one clip like that, slide it in place, slide the piece, and then you only have to do one in this kind of like sketchy situation. But at this point, you should kind of check your rod for play. This one has next to none. Usually these XR200s don't, just because they're not really the biggest powerhouses. They don't tend to blow everything up. But next, um, I'm gonna grab my new piston. We're gonna load the rings on it, uh, get it in place, and then I can remove all this coverings and then I'm gonna start cleaning the, the gasket surface. Um, but I'll be right back. So when you're loading your rings, um, you can watch some other videos from people about their opinion on how to do it because I am by no means an expert, but you're gonna do one little ring and then your scrubber ring and then one other little ring and they all go in this one and then you got your following two rings. Uh, obviously, you wanna offset the gaps and there's rules for that that I don't know much about. So you just wanna load them in uh, be careful not to spread them very far. Try not to scratch up this when you're doing it with the edges and you'll be fine. All right, so I got the piston all loaded. I'm just gonna put the gasket down and then um, put some assembly lube on the inside of the cylinder and then we're gonna lower the cylinder down. Um, you have to compress the rings with your fingers while lowering the cylinder down. It's kind of difficult and the bottom of the cylinder is beveled so it should accept the rings. Um, and then you also have to load the chain up into the cylinder. It's kind of like a balancing act while you do it, but it's not that bad. All right, so the cylinder's on. You wanna make sure your timing chain uh, piece is up. I have a little bolt here just holding my chain from dropping down. Just get yourself a screwdriver or something. Uh, you'll see all my uh, assembly lube stuff there creeping out the top. Um, next is gonna be the head. I am not putting that head back on. I have another one up there, but I need to change out the valve stem seals so i'm gonna do that first and then uh, after that we'll be ready to go i got my head gasket here um pretty self-explanatory i'm just gonna put that down there but we'll get that going and then once we get the valve stem seals changed we'll drop the head in place uh put it back together and then we have to get into setting the timing so here we're going to be changing the valve stem seals um i got this little tool it's pretty cheap but it's like a little C-clamp, you just tighten it here. And when you do that, it's gonna compress the valve. Um, there's no good way to do this, but as you do that, it'll compress the valve and then it'll allow the keeper pins to come out and then you can release it and then the, uh, the valve will come out. At which point you can change your seals, replace your valves, whatever you're there to do. I don't have one in my hand at the moment, but I recommend a small magnetic screwdriver. It comes in handy a lot here. But we should be able to pull them out now. There's one. There's two. Do not lose these. Okay, there's one. second one out of there if you're redoing one of these motors I definitely recommend doing this because otherwise what will happen is it'll start up and it'll burn oil for like 10 seconds after startup that's usually because these seals like to weep so the two pins are out now we just loosen this carefully
when you're deep uh, taking the pressure off the spring this time so it'll have pressure almost the whole way out okay now you can pull your seat clamp thing out of here and you can take the first spring out second spring out and pop that down and you just drop your valve out and we're looking at this seal now these seals for the most part every time I've ever done anything with them they will come out in about a million pieces fortunately um, the good news is, is if they do come out in a million pieces it means they're old and brittle if they pop right out nice and easy probably means they still had some life left in them but I don't take that risk. So this one's gonna choose the million pieces. So they just pop in place right here. go and then we just repeat the process put it back together All right, you wanna make sure to load your timing chain guide. Just pop that back in there. You got your other one there, chains out, head gaskets in place, and now we're just gonna lower the head down on top of that. So, pretty simple. Take this guy. Obviously, you're gonna to have to catch the timing chain with one hand. It kinda of sucks. That guide needs to go up through. Wiggle a little bit, get your alignment pins, and then put your keep, however you're keeping your timing chain in place, go ahead and put that in. And it's on. Now the only thing you can install right away is this guy, and he's going to go right here, and that will hold the cylinder in place. And then um, after that, you can go ahead and install the bolt that holds your timing chain tensioner in place. Um, and then we are going to start working on getting the cam back on and start timing. So you're going to take this cover off and then uh, that's for your wrench to turn. That's for you to look and see. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but there's a little T in there and an F. When you're on the T, your cam is going to have a corresponding uh, number there. It's like right there, there's a circle. Also, you want both lobes, both lobes should be pointed down, um, which gives you a pretty good idea. Um, I think theoretically, I'm just thinking about this in my head as I'm filming this. If you spun this sprocket the other way, the lobes could be up, but that's kind of another thing. So anyways, uh, you want that circle up, so I'm going to try to load that on here, and then I'll load the chain over that, and then that's pretty much it. And you can cycle the motor over a few times by hand if you want. Um, make sure those marks continue, but be careful not to drop your chain down. If you do, you can still get it. Also, make sure you didn't lose this bearing. Uh, it has a pin that's going to align with the back here. There's a whole group. There's a groove for it to go in. All right, so I got it lined up with a T. If you want to not have to take these two screws off and still be able to load the cam in, you want to bring the cam in like this. So the chain's going to come from the back side and it will slip over. Uh, and then you want to reset your tensioner, take this bolt out. You want to push, there's something in there, push it down, it'll pop free. Then you take this guy, gonna put it back on. Feelers. 
feel the tension. Okay, we'll tighten that back down. And then after this, we are going to load our rocker arms on. And the only thing with those is you need to hold the rockers with your fingers. You gotta put it down. Um, otherwise it'll bind, but uh, make sure you have this bearing. You have the piece in the hole here, or it won't go down. Other than that, pretty straightforward. Usually I hold my thumb like right here while I'm loading it, so it'll keep the tension on there, but pretty simple. All right, so the head's all the way back on. We're just gonna put our pulse generator back on, um, put your seal in place, put the bolts to hold it in, turn the piece so it clicks onto the key, which is somewhere right there. I can feel it. And then uh, put the keeper bolt on, then put your cover on, new gasket for that, and then you're essentially back where you started for engine removal. All right, I think I'm just gonna continue on from here, but basically drop the motor back in just like you took it out, put all your engine mounts back, and then just reverse order put back together, and you'll be good to go.